in the city of pittsburgh more than sixty thousand calls for help are answered each year by the emergency medical services in an average time of only six minutes this is not a recreation it's a ride with one of the busiest ems units in the country you'll be surprised you may walk down the street six months or a year from now and somebody will come up to you and they'll say you took care of me and say hey i'm here because of you and that that's really what matters that really makes you feel great to know that these people do remember you and they appreciate it 911, may I help you? This is Rich Schoberg, St. Joseph, Parish, and Mount Oliver. We need an ambulance immediately. A woman was just hit by a car. What happened to them? It's an older lady. The car must have let loose, but she's hurt. There's two in the car, and I think a... Are a they trapped inside the car? Yes. I already started the paramedics. Initially, we received a call for a woman thrown from a car. Very shortly after that, we started receiving numerous calls through 911 for a car into a wall, a woman hit by a car. Uh, possible entrapment involved. I think it totaled about 10 calls we received through 911 for this call. Okay, 5102, 5202, and 5108. We are getting multiple calls, different locations. We have 430 Cathedral Avenue for an elderly female thrown out of the car. The accident had happened just as church services let out. The car struck a pedestrian, then ran on down a hill into a fence. You have to, um, Physically prepare yourself and mentally prepare yourself before you even get to the call. You have to talk yourself into what you have to do and what things need to be done before you get there. And then you have to keep a cool head, especially when you have a lot of people running around at the scene hysterical. And sometimes the, uh, the victims themselves are hysterical. If you don't present yourself as a calm person, then uh, you just lose control of the scene. When EMS supervisor Jan Gamir arrives, paramedics are trying to sort out the situation and treat the victims. When I got into the car, I thought everything was okay. Here I discovered that my gas pedal was stuck. And Marie kept screaming, I can't stop, I can't stop. And I remember seeing someone in front of us, and to tell you the truth, I didn't even know that we had injured that woman at the time. 74-year-old Virginia Bauer was standing in the church parking lot when the car hit her. Ed, her husband of 54 years, watched helplessly. Is this your wife? Yeah. You going to the hospital with her, sir? Okay, we're going to put you up in the front of the ambulance, okay? Okay, they're going to be working on her there. She's going fairly good, okay? Why don't you come on up front here and I'll put you in. I saw her talking to this friend of hers, so I went over to my car and I locked the car, and I just turned over and I saw her going up in the air on the roof of the car, and then she landed out in the street. It was a terrible experience to see her wife bouncing up in the air. The woman that was struck by the car was um, our primary concern at that time. She's, she visually presented herself as the most seriously injured. Um, when the woman in the front seat said that they were fine, but due to the, um, just the way the vehicle presented itself, there was some sort of indication that they were obviously injured and they just didn't know about it. Put your head down. Ow! What's the pain out there? A lot of time that's our problems. People think they're okay, and they don't want us to take care of them. They don't want us to help them, and then the longer they sit and the more it goes, they find that, you know, things may be going on. Three others that were in the vehicle were all minor at this time. And at the hospital, information about the patients is passed directly to the doctors on call. It's pretty important. It can tell you a lot. Paramedics can really help you out because they can tell you what the car looked like. They can tell you what was broken in the car. Sort of gives you a clue as to what was broken in the patient. Trauma surgeon Dr. Mary Jean Crow brings Ed Bauer up to date on his wife's condition. Hi, I'm Dr. Crow. How are you? Well, we've been taking care of her, and so far what we know is that the ca that she was struck by a car and flipped over the top of the car. What we do know about right now is that she's broken her left arm right near the wrist, and she's got a laceration above her eyebrow, and we're fixing that right now. We want to get a CT scan, um, a special type of x-ray of her head, just to make sure that there isn't anything else going on. We've got lots of other x-rays, but so far those are the only things that we found wrong. EMS arrives within two minutes. 61-year-old Richard Horton had been stabbed, apparently by his stepdaughter. He was treated at the scene by paramedic Mike E. 
my partner asked him uh, what he was injured with. He said he was stabbed with a, with a fork. And um, at fir first thought was just make light of it, okay, a little fork, and then maybe just gave him a little flesh wound. But uh, uh, my partner had discovered that, uh, that what he had been stabbed with was actually a barbecue skewer and uh, apparently had gone in quite deep. A lot of times you put all your efforts toward the patient, which is correct, but it's at the emotional expense of some of the family. It really becomes a, a challenge to try to balance out all the emotions and make sure that everybody gets taken care of. Okay, I can't really tell if it goes in to tell you the truth. Does it hurt deep inside, sir? Does it hurt? It's burning. Dr. Bill Petriola is one of the trauma surgeons on duty. There was indeed a puncture wound uh, through the fascia. That being the case, we worry that that puncture wound could have gotten in and punctured one of the vital organs. We can feel the hole where, this, where that fork went all the way through. We're going to have to take you to the operating room. We're going to have to take a look in there and make sure nothing's, nothing important has been hit. I saw the car coming toward me. The next day, Virginia, the pedestrian hit in the car accident, is visited by her husband, daughter, and priest. She escaped with a broken knee, wrist, and shoulder. We're going to leave now, too, then. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Take care of yourself. They were beautiful. During Richard Horton's surgery, it was discovered that the fork missed everything. He will be going home in a few days. Well, it wasn't for the town medics. I don't even think I'd be here today. Because they come, they were so nice and so swift. I think that's what saved me. I don't think it, I know it. Virginia Bauer has already begun the painful process of healing. I have to get as much exercise as I can if, I'm, if you're letting me go home tomorrow. <laughs> People who helped me were wonderful people, and I certainly appreciate the fact that I am here because for two days I didn't think I was going to be here. I just didn't uh, think I was going to make it at all.